you don't have to travel a distance in order to have a touch or a feel of god he is right within you swadhamna akhila shakti dharaha he wields all the powers brahman the supreme reality the paramatma god he is a presence in which all the infinite powers are contained the substances and products of the world have got limited properties now fire will heat and burn water will wet and flow air will blow and dry the earth will simply remain and digest these are the limited powers of these natural elements when it comes to god all the multiple endless infinite powers he has whatever is required at whichever time for whatever purpose that will be manifest at that particular time akhila shakti dharaha such an akhila shakti dharaha the wielder the possessor of infinite powers he is present in the heart in the body of everyone my dear viewers are you able to estimate your inner potential and permeation your body has completed its growth or will complete its growth at the age of 21 thereafter it is going to decline if at all there is a growth the growth is in the mind in the intelligence and that is the expansion of your attitudes a reformation a refinement a loftiness of your attitude greater and greater understanding of your intelligence so it is a kind of a horizontal and all fold expansion that will take place to you as long as you live as an adult with a normal mind and intelligence shrimad bhagavatam constantly tries to stimulate this inner growth and enrichment process akhila shakti dhara swadhamna wielding all the powers you are present your presence is there within the body and because of that presence you are activating my dormant speech are you doing only that no anyamscha hasta charana shravana tvagadin you are activating equally the other organs one is hasta hand so far as moving and holding are concerned charana feet walking is concerned shravana hearing ear is concerned twak the skin touch is concerned tvagadin then pranan the different type of pranas we have a concept of pancha pranas prana apana vyana udana and samana these are the five fold prana that we have in order to do different functions in the body pranan namo bhagavate purushaya tubhyam oh my dear lord bhagwan you are the supreme purusha and supreme purusha holding all the powers and possibilities that we can imagine holding all these powers you are present in every being activating their inner as well as outer activities such a god such a lord who is close to me closer to me than the body the mind the intelligence and the ego that god i worship he says tell me my viewers he is god at a distance or he is close to you closer to you than the body he is the one that you denote by the term i that alone is he so the distance to god is cut cut the invisibility of god of god is overcome and you have actualized him in your own heart and presence this is what shrimad bhagavata promised in the second verse what did he say sadyo hrdya varudhyate trakrdibhi shushrushu vistakshanad by the shrimad bhagavata narration the author says i want to install the supreme lord in your heart to be a constant and ever present resident there now he is accomplishing it through this dhruva episode yo andah pravishya mama vaja mimam prasuptam ஸ்வதாம்னாஸ்வனாஸ்வன்ஸ்பீக்கிங் அபவுட் காட் காட் வேர் இஸ் திஸ் காட் ஐ கேன் நாட் சீ ஹிம் 
And if there is a God whom we cannot see, what is the purpose of speaking about him and praying before him? So there is a riddle, there is an enigma, a puzzle there. Unless you are able to explain to the rational children, God in a rational manner, why should they have devotion to God? Similarly, every value that you propose to your children must be properly explained. When values are properly explained, they become very rational. Anybody who has got intelligence will be able to understand, accept and pursue them. I told you about the three boys whom Srimad Bhagavada, Vedavyasa and Sukamuni present before us. The first was, as I already said, the Muni Kumara, the son of Shami Maharshi. The second is the young Dhruva. Now we are going to meet Prahlada, the seven-year-old son of Hiranyagashipu. Srimad Bhagavadam has 12 skandhas. If you take the middle, because it is an even number, you cannot make actually a middle. If it was 13, we could say the seventh skandha is actually the middle. Because it is 12, how will you divide it? Six. There is no middle there at all. Nevertheless, the seventh skandha is the middle. After six, that's seven. The seventh skandha has been put particularly the episode of Prahlada, there is one more importance for the seventh. After the Prahlada episode, there is a complete conversation between sage Narada and Yudhishthira, where Narada Maharshi explains the whole of our Sanadana Dharma, the Dharma, the entire system of morality, ethics, spirituality, philosophy, God and self-realization, the goal of life, Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. All these are explained beautifully at the end of the skandha. Before that, it is actually the episode of Prahlada and Hiranyakashipu. Because of the nectarine character of the Prahlada story, the Bhagavata author wanted to intercept, inter, insert it as the middle, that is considered to be the best. If you take a plantain, a long plantain, or any other fruit that matter, any other fruit, fruit for that matter, you will find the central portion is the best, not the two extremes or end portions. Similarly, in Srimad Bhagavadam, you will find this narration about Prahlada particularly, it is so beautiful and so nice. I have no words to describe them. If at all you are going to read any particular portion of Srimad Bhagavadam with special emphasis and attention, I would suggest you read the Prahlada story. This is what I will say. It is a story important in many ways. You understand how this little boy behaved in front of a tyrannical father. How was he able to interact with him? <coughs> Every time the father was emitting and fuming with hatred, anger, intolerance. But the boy never lost his temper. He was always very respectful, folding his hands, looking down so to say. He was gentleness personified. The father was cruelty and tyranny embodied. And there was a confrontation, an ideological conflict between the father and the son. Even in that situation, never budging an inch from filial loyalty, filial loyalty. This Prahlada firmly stood on his own resolve. Because it was something that could not be bartered. My dear souls, if you want to have a resolute mind, better learn Prahlada's story and behavior. This happens in the seventh skanda. It is very, very delicious and sweet. Srimad Bhagavadam is sweet day after day, word after word, I said. The Prahlada story is perhaps the sweetest in it. There is an unyielding filial magnificence in this boy. However much the father tried, frightened, the teachers also tried, intimidated, persuaded, cajoled, many things were done. But this little boy's mind, the devotional loyalty and fondness to Lord Hari, he was never prepared to barter. He stood firmly on that and faced every assault that came, ultimately he won. We cannot say the son won and the father lost. It is not so. He was vindicated. 
and his father also was rewarded it's such a beautiful story is it possible that a son can become devotional in this manner if you ask i have something very precious to tell you there is a verse this is from the fifth skanda of shrimad bhagavatam chapter 5 and verse number 18 you can have any kind of a compromise any kind of a sacrifice in all matters when it comes to your reliance on god the path and the pursuit of devotion i don't think anybody has got a right to intercept you or ask you to change and you are not supposed to yield at all whether it is father mother teacher or another listen to this verse shrimad bhagavata in the opening verse and then in the second verse made a statement what is that ധർമ്മ പ്രോജിത കൈതവോത്ര പരമോ നിർമ്മത്സരാണ് സദാം വേദ്യം വാസ്തവമത്ര വസ്തു ശിവദം താപത്രയോന്മൂലനം ഐ ആം ഡിസ്ക്ലോസിങ് ആൻഡ് ഡിസ്ക്രൈബിങ് ആൻഡ് റിവീലിംഗ് ഹിയർ ധർമ്മ ദ കോഡ് ഓഫ് റൈറ്റിയസ് കോണ്ടാക്ട് ഫോർ ഹ്യൂമൻ ബീങ്സ് മാർക്ക് ദ വേർഡ്സ് ദ കോഡ് ഓഫ് റൈറ്റിയസ് കോണ്ടാക്ട് ഫോർ ഹ്യൂമൻ ബീങ്സ് and how do i reveal it projhita kaida votra paramo with a lot of relish delight and consistency i speak about it without any shyness any reservation i open it out let anybody say anything fire burns and i say fire is hot in saying fire is hot do i have to make a compromise it is hot it is hot ice is cold in the same manner i am speaking about the different codes of conduct for the human beings i will not foster any kind of a reservation fear or inhibition in the matter he says now he makes such a statement it comes in the rishabha story gurun na sasyat swajano na sasyat pita na sasyat janani na sasyat ദൈവം ന തസ്യാത് ന പതിശ്ച സസ്യാത് ന മോചയേദ്യസമുപേദ മൃത്യും വി ആർ ഓൾ ബോൺ ആസ് ചിൽഡ്രൻ ടു അവർ പേരൻസ് വെരി ഗുഡ് ആൻഡ് വൈ ആർ വി ഗെറ്റിംഗ് ബോൺ ദ പേരൻസ് വിൽ ബ്രിങ് അസ് അപ് ആൻഡ് വി വിൽ ഗ്രോ ഇയർ ആഫ്റ്റർ ഇയർ മന്ത് ആഫ്റ്റർ ആ മന്ത് ഡേ ആഫ്റ്റർ ഡേ വീക്ക് ആഫ്റ്റർ വീക്ക് ആൻഡ് ഫൈനലി വി ബിക്കം അൻ അഡൾട്ട് ഇനീഷ്യലി ദ ടേക്ക് അസ് ഓൺ ദയർ ഹിപ്പ് ഓൺ ദയർ ലാപ് they pat us they put us into sleep after some time they themselves make us walk they teach us to speak everything is done and the child grows year after year initially a little child then a boy or a girl then an adolescent person thereafter he becomes youthful when you come to the age of 16 18 20 21 adult maturity should be there once you have become an adult it is for you to decide where you have to go of course you will be banking upon your inheritance as well as acquisition provided by your parents that much is very clear no objection so this is the story now once you have become adult it is for you to decide all relationships say the parents bring up the children what should they aim for them what is the highest attainment of a human should not the parents speak about it to the children should not the parents themselves attain it and embody it what is the supreme attainment for human life i don't know whether you have thought about it are we supposed to be delighting only in the external world these are all perishable objects objects which perish day after day moment after moment they are called transitory evanescent transitory ephemeral what is meant by transitoriness ephemerality they will never last forever our body also will not last forever how long can we chase these things should we not look for something permanent everlasting and is that available anywhere in the external world no then where shall we look to internally and what is there the soul is there god is there so should not every parent realize it and also impart this lesson to the children if they don't do it who fails the child fails or the parent fails so see what shrimad bhagavatam says gurun na sasyat 
Swajano na sasyat. A teacher is no teacher. A relative is no relative. Pita na sasyat. A father is no father. Janani na sasyat. The mother is no mother. Devam na tatsyat. See how beautifully he has put it. Whatever in the form of God you worship, that is no God at all. Na patishcha sasyat. The husband is no husband. Provided, na moja yedya samubeta murtyum. If any one of these sources is not helping you, guiding you, inspiring you, enlightening you to overcome the ephemeral world, its impact in your mind, they cannot be considered to be themselves. I don't know whether you understand this statement. If you are a father, you are a husband, you are a parent, you must be able to help the other one. If you are a parent, you are a child. If you are a husband, you are a wife. If you are a mother, you are a child. If you are an idol, that idol must be able to help the worshipper to overcome the impact of death, the impending fear of death. Unless this enlightenment is provided, guidance for that is provided, they cannot be called either a father, a mother, a guru, a teacher, even a god or an idol, we cannot call them. What a beautiful statement. So it is for the parents to tell the children about the ephemerality of the world and the art and the process of overcoming the ephemerality and realize the immortality of oneself inwardly. It is for everyone to help in the process. If this basic, fundamental and ultimate mission or duty is not taken up and fulfilled, don't call yourselves as parents husbands, teachers, gods, and the others. Never say that. Now, this is the actual position. In this case, what happened? Prahlada was a little boy, born to Kayadu and Hiranyagajibu. Right in his young age, he used to exhibit symptoms of rare devotion. He was playing with his playthings. Suddenly, he will leave all the items, close the eyes, and sit unconcerned drowned in himself. Kayadu became very agitated. She used to come sprinkle cow dung water on his body. Sometimes bring cows and wave the tail of the cow around his neck, thinking that he is possessed by a ghost. But actually that was not the case. This Prahlada, he was so devoted to the Lord, being innocent, a guileless mind he had. So he was now and then having an embrace of the invisible Lord. Srimad Bhagavada will put it, Govinda Parirambhitaha, Govinda Parirambhitaha, embraced by Govinda, Lord Hari, inwardly, within his body, he forgot everything. This was the trait. So the father very clearly knew that my son is an ardent devotee of Lord Hari. And what was Hiranyagashibu? He was an enemy number one. He looked at the whole world and decided the order of the world is not all right. This is all made by Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu. I will not accept it. I am going to combat this Mahavishnu. Directly encounter him. And I must have the powers to contend him. How will I get the powers? Let me go. Let me go to the mountain and perform austerity. Which austerity shall I perform? I will take Brahma as my focus. Brahma is creating, Mahavishnu is sustaining, and Paramashiva is destroying. All the three have equal positions. Now I want to content Mahavishnu. So let me get the favor and blessings from Brahma. So he went and started doing penance. He was an Asura. So his penance also was very, very ferocious. You know how he performed the austerity? Urdhva Bahur Navo Drishtihi Padangushta Ashridavani. He was standing on two toes. Only on two toes. Will you be able to stand on your toes? Even with help? So he was pressing the two toes into the earth. And straight he stood. Urdhvabahu. Lifted his hand. Looked high up. Nabho drishtihi. What more is required? Such a fierce austerity he performed on Brahma. 
Brahma was very pleased. He came and he found the whole Hiranyakashipu. He was not visible. He was completely covered by ant hill. And ants were crawling there. Little, little small creepers also had grown, plants. What is this? Such an ardent, severe, fierce, terrifying austerity. Nobody has done it earlier. Nobody is doing it now except this person. And nobody is going to do it also. Brahma is somebody who is never cared by anybody in our land. You know why? He is only a creator and we are all created. So what business do we have with Brahma? We are all created. We are only concerned about our intriguing life. So people are worshipping Mahavishnu. We are afraid of death. Therefore we are also worshippers of Shiva. There is hardly one temple for Brahma in the whole of India. Now, Hiranyakashipu started performing on Brahma. Brahma considered it to be a great fortune. So he was very happy. What did he do? He sprinkled the water from his kamandalu on the anthill. So all the anthill fell and Hiranyakashipu's picture came out. Only skin and bone, nothing else was there. He said, what is this? This kind of a fierce austerity? I am extremely pleased. You ask me for whatever boon you want. Whenever God is pleased with us, he always says, what do you want my devotee? Ask for anything, unreservedly I am here to give you whatever you want. Hiranyakashipu listed a number of booms. Not one. His list was very long. I should not be killed by anybody you have created. Neither a creature, nor an animal, nor a bird, nor a reptile, nor a human. I should not be killed. I should not be killed either in the day or in the night. I should not be killed either inside or outside. I should not be killed on the land, in the air, in water, on the mountain. Bah! So many boons he asked for. Securities, insurances. All the insurances were sanctioned by Brahma. Not even he held back one. Whatever he asked for, he gave. Now Hiranyakashipu was very happy. He was reinforced now, equipped now, enriched and empowered now to contain the multi-powerful Mahavishnu. What did he do? Everything good in this world should be disallowed, destroyed. Mahavishnu is rooted in sacrifices, worship, in Brahmanas who chant the Vedas, who contemplate on the Vedanta truths, etc. So wherever there are ashramas, spiritual abodes, religious temples, Vedic ceremonies and rituals performed, where the Padashala is going on, go everywhere and destroy every one of them. Never allow anybody to chant the name of God. Completely destroy, intercept. So the huge followers took all the articles they could command. Spears, knives, and different type of crowbars, pickaxes. So many things they took. And then chindi, chindi, bindi, bindi. Chindi, chindi, bindi, bindi. Break, break, cut, cut. Liquidate, eliminate. Chanting all these things, their war cries, they went everywhere and destroyed all noble needs. People became breathless. Are, what is this tyranny? We have never seen anything like this. We are performing our sacrifices, chanting the name of our Lord. See, in the Center for Inner Resources Development, I am being recorded for a telecast series. We are only a few people here, maybe about 8 plus 1, 9 people are there. We are not disturbing anybody. If it was Hiranyakashipu's time, he would have arrived here also and destroyed this recording even. Because it is about Srimad Bhagavadam. That means Mahavishnu will be strengthened and reinforced. So everybody felt, what is this challenge? What is this tyranny? So they went to Mahavishnu. Are you hearing me? They went to Mahavishnu. You all feel, how does God manage everything? God is not managing everything with his eyes and hands. Understand? God has no eyes and he has no hands. Only the things created by nature have all these things. What is Mahavishnu doing? On Ananta, the wonderful snake, 
you know the snake coils up like this so there will be a lot of aeration in between and he would be lying there and the snakes are by their very nature cold also so no air conditioning is necessary he was lying comfortably one is a cobra and his vehicle is an eagle garuda are you understanding the contrast the two are deadly enemies but in the presence of god they lose all their enmity and they behave like friends in the same manner my dear souls there is a point of understanding there is a point of inner sublimity where all contradictions and conflicts meet and dissolve how many times shall i repeat this sentence this is called spirituality this is called the philosophical or transcendental life we are generally confronting always pairs of opposites pairs of opposites but all these pairs have sprung from a source which is neither this nor that which is neither dark nor light which is neither inside nor outside it is that transcendental sphere that we must be able to elevate our mind and perception to this is what we want so mahavishnu embodies that he was lying there unmindful and insensitive to anything all these people went awakened him he opened his eyes and asked what is the trouble they narrate the whole story then mahavishnu says what does he say see after all hiranyakashipu is powerful by virtue of his own merits he has done penance on brahma and brahma has sanctioned all the boons that he wanted he is actually a counterpart i cannot conflict with him or contradict him so he will be shining for some time 